There are two major elements for effective mystery, and J.K. Rowling displays a remarkable mastery of each one. These two elements weave together and require a delicate balance. They are, in no particular order, the problem and the solution to the proposed problem. If the problem is explored more than the solution, then the spell is broken and the mystery is just too convoluted. If the solution is explored more than the problem, then there isn't enough intrigue and the audience will most likely drop the story. J.K. Rowling weaves together such a striking balance that it actually scares me. The first chapter in the story introduces the problem of the story, and, as far as the audience understands, it has to do with four things that are revealed in subsequent order. The strange occurrences that are creeping out Mr. Dorsley, the boy who lived, which is the title of the first chapter, his now dead parents, whom we will talk about without giving much detail, and the killer, Voldemort. These four crucial components of the problem, which is another way of saying a multi-layered hook, are revealed in subsequent order. The first of these problems is a bless that tells the reader things will get far more interesting than plain words. Mr. and Mrs. Dursley of number four, Privet Drive, were proud to say that they were perfectly normal. Thank you very much. The wording of this sentence is such that it's actually making fun of the dull existence of the world and, as a result, it bledges to the reader that things will become more interesting. The second component of the problem are the Potters and the relationship with the Dursleys. It is mentioned as early as the third paragraph. But they also had a secret, and their greatest fear was that somebody would discover it. They didn't think they could bear it if anyone found out about the Potters. The story progresses at this particular style, where the Potters and their son Harry as well as the strange occurrences are only background hum, never given too much attention but always there with enough words to entice the reader, convincing him or her there is more to the story than meets the eye. Then J.K. Rowling delivers on her first promise, the strange occurrences. He got into his car and backed out of number four's drive. It was on the corner of the street that he noticed the first sign of something peculiar. A cat reading a map. These strange occurrences keep happening and eventually lead us straight to the third problem, which is... Those people in cloaks. And when he left the building at five o'clock, he was still so worried that he walked straight into someone just outside the door. It was a few seconds before Mr. Dursley realized that the man was wearing a violet cloak. He didn't seem at all upset at being almost knocked to the ground. On the contrary, his face split into a wide smile, and he said in a squeaky voice that made passers-by stare, Oh, don't be sorry, my dear sir, for nothing could upset me today. Rejoice, for you know who has gone at last. Even muggles like yourself should be celebrating this happy, happy day. The reader is enticed because cats reading mobs and cloaked strangers seem to be having a tipsy over the death of someone, referred to as you-know-who. Another thing to notice is how the introduction of each component neatly spills into the introduction of the next. A mixture of the previous three components plays out for the following thousand words. There are even encounters with the name Porter, and poor Dursley goes nuts. Even stranger still is the cat that is a constant background character and seems to return multiple times in the chapter. As he pulled into the driveway of number four. The first thing he saw, and it didn't improve his mood, was the tabby cat he had spotted that morning. It was now sitting on his garden wall. He was sure it was the same one. It had the same markings around its eyes. Shoo! said Mr. Dursley, loudly. The cat didn't move. It just gave him a stern look. And then, you know who is finally brought up. I suppose, um, he really has gone, Dumbledore. It certainly seems so, said Dumbledore. We have much to be thankful for. Would you care for a sherbet lemon? A what? A uh, sherbet lemon. They're a kind of muggle sweet I'm rather fond of. No, thank you, said Professor McGonagall coldly, as though she didn't think this was the moment for sherbet lemons. As I say, even if you know who has gone... My dear professor, surely a sensible person like yourself can call him by his name. All this you-know-who nonsense. For eleven years I've been trying to persuade people to call him by his proper name. Voldemort. Professor McGonagall flinched, but Dumbledore, who was unsticking two sherbet lemons, seemed not to notice. 
These three components, the Potters, the Strange Occurrences and Voldemort, play out and at the point where Voldemort's name is first dropped, you are fully immersed in the world J.K. Rowling is selling because of the way she has thus far hooked you and delivered with exceedingly better results. A hook is but a pledge to the audience and J.K. Rowling uses it and answers it flawlessly. The final promise J.K. delivers on is about Harry. Up to the point where Voldemort's name is first dropped, Harry's name is mentioned a total of three times. Both professors discuss about what had happened and the death of the Potters and how unlikely it was for Harry to survive. I remember hearing it the first time and just wishing to meet this ever so hyped boy and what he looks like. It's effective mystery. The payoff is well into the final third of the first chapter. Dumbledore and Professor McGonagall bent forward over the bundle of blankets. Inside, just visible, was a baby boy, fast asleep. Under a tuft of jet black hair over his forehead, they could see a curiously shaped cut like a bolt of light. J.K. Rowling is perhaps more a mystery slash detective writer than she is a fantasy writer. Throughout the Harry Potter books, there is an immense amount of detail she pours into mysterious events and never fails to deliver a compelling mystery with a good setup, foreshadowing hints for those observant readers and, most especially, good payoffs that, at least in my opinion, have never felt cheap. She has even written mystery novels under a different alias called Robert Galbraith. I can only see why she would. Good mystery authors exist all over the world. However, about J.K. Rowling, I very much appreciate the fact that her mysteries always have a well-realized bay off. She's never cheap and for me that's absolutely amazing because I've read so many goddamn mystery novels with cheap and terrible endings that one, don't make any sense according to the sprinkled clues and two, mug the story of any value. Character Weapon the second element that kept me enticed and pushed me to turn the pages was how insanely good the character weapon was, aka effective character relationships. Every character in the story serves a clear purpose and they're interwoven with such care and delicacy that even the removal of any of the characters would leave plot holes all over the books. Dumbledore is a father figure for Harry as well as the one who made sure Voldemort didn't become unstoppable too early. If he is gone off the overall network, then Voldemort spirals out of control and wreaks havoc, perhaps killing Harry and the rest of the supporting cast too early. When they weren't strong enough. Moreover, if he is gone, then a possible book or two are added to the overall runtime because of Harry's quest to learn stuff that would be far better communicated in a quick sentence. And a final moreover, if he is removed, who else was gonna give us that grand sass, huh? Other characters like Evan's protective charm, Hermione's general clumsiness, as well as ability to pull herself together and solve the mystery, and his name's back and forth switching add their own charisma to the story. You could write a bay on why removing even the most insignificant of characters would cause ripple effects that leave plot holes all over the story as I said before yeah I sound like a broken record but it's fucking great character development that affects the world of the story I have rarely seen this in stories but whenever I do I make sure to take note of it Throughout the seven books, Harry develops as a character. In the first book, he struggles with the loss of his family, wishing that he could get them back, but as the story progresses and he meets Hermione and Ron as well as the rest of the wizarding world, he develops as a person and accepts the fact that while his family might be dead, he can build a new family. In the second book, he proves his bravery to join Gryffindor. In the third one, he deals with identity crisis as new revelations serve as about his parents. And in the fourth and fifth, he deals with self-esteem and love. The final book examines sacrifice and what it means to lose loved ones, feelings that he thought he had dealt with when he was a child but hurt even more as he is older and more aware. J.K. Rowling never shies away from forcing Harry into hurdles that test his prowess as well as attack the weaknesses in his personality. Coming back to the first sentence which was character development affecting the story, whenever Harry conquers these inner demons, he is always capable of doing something he wasn't able before. The Patronus charm is one such spell. That's what I think is so brilliant about these books. The character development always comes back to affect the world of the story and propels it into the next entry in the series. Every character has a unique visual flair. Dumbledore is described as tall, very old, and with a beard long enough to tuck into his belt. That's the key note, beard long enough to tuck into his belt. Voldemort is described to have pale skin, a jack white skull-like face, snake-like slits for nostrils, a skeletally thin and long thin hands with unnaturally long fingers. Professor Snape is a thin man with a sallow skin, a large hooked nose, and yellow uneven teeth. Ron is tall, thin and gangling with freckles, big hands and feet, and a long nose. All of these descriptions have the 
the most unique quirk of the character in almost all of them. Dumbledore has his beard, Voldemort has his snake-like slits for nostrils, while Professor Snape has his hooked nose. They all communicate a stark image that immediately welcomes itself in to your head. What's also unique about Rowling's characters is the way they speak. Almost all the characters have a specific tone. Dumbledore is sassy yet wise. Voldemort is always screaming about Hermione is aspiring some much needed exposition while Harry is always curious and in want of information. They are in fact so distinct you could play a game with yourself and guess which character is saying which line of dialogue. So these four elements, effective mystery, compelling character relationships, consequential character development, and unique characteristic flares are what make me appreciate the Harry Potter books. Comment below what do you like about them and as always have a nice one.